In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. She woke up to her cat going crazy when she sees this in her backyard. It's literally 5 a.m. and there are people feet printed all over my deck in the snow. Do you see this? They start over there. And it like barefoot walks up to the table. There's nothing coming up to the... Maybe there is some coming up to the door. What? And I don't see any in the yard. What is this? Disturbed that somebody might be stalking her family, she checked the security cameras but saw nothing. Two days later, it happens again, and this time, it's even stranger. Cat says that she woke up on edge because normally the cat that greets her in the morning was fixated on the sliding glass door. Freaked out that the intruder might be back, Cat runs upstairs to get a better view of the backyard. Okay, morning footprint update. This is the first time we've had snow since the initial footprint sighting. Do you see that? So those prints are in a different spot than when we had prints before. I contacted Kat to see if I could find out more about this story and what she told me is pretty insane. It turns out that about a year prior to her video, something similar had happened. One morning they woke up to see all of their lawn chairs had been pulled out from underneath their table with no evidence of a trespasser. What's even more shocking is that the children had been claiming somebody was watching them ever since they moved into this house. That would be pretty terrifying and there's no evidence on any kind of security system. It almost seems like it could be a potential case of gang stalking, but being that they did not find any footage on the home surveillance, it makes it a little bit harder to believe that. It could be a paranormal thing, or it could be someone messing with them. Imagine if you had the security footage and just out of nowhere feet marks were just being imprinted onto the ground. That would at least confirm to me that there's either people that are invisible, ghosts, or aliens perhaps. Or maybe there's some kind of technology out there that I'm not aware of that some kind of military might be using, but then why are they messing with me? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Do you think this is real or could it be a hoax? Should the Vatican have included the term interdimensional beings in its recent guidance update regarding the supernatural phenomena and other apparitions? Many think they should have. Some individuals have also suggested a less earthly reason for the Vatican's guidance update saying that the rise in information and interest in UFO and UAP topic in recent years might be part of the reason. As described, an apparition refers to the appearance of a spiritual or supernatural visitor, most likely with instances involving a divine entity. With so much talk of interdimensional beings associated with UFOs and UAPs lately, it seems like it may coincide with what the Vatican is talking about. Could this video footage captured by a security camera explain why the Vatican is updating its new guidance in handling apparitions and other supernatural phenomena? Could this be an example of an interdimensional being exiting a craft of some sort? What do you think? A lot of people get confused about what, who and what the Anunnaki actually are. They tend to want to give the Anunnaki a specific gender or race in a lot of cases, but it's not. Anunnaki, the term, it's a term, it's not a name. The term Anunnaki is actually uh, a generalized term to describe beings that are not from Earth, right? So if, if you and I travel to another solar system, or maybe even to Mars, we met Martians, and they say, hey, guys, where are you from? We're not going to say Miami, <laughs> right? <laughs> My name is Billy Carson, and I'm a male from Miami, Florida. They're going to be like, who? We're just going to say Earthlings. And so the term Anunnaki, the way it was defined by the Sumerians, it was that it's a generalized term, those who came from heaven to earth. And that term has made it into many other texts in various alterations. Even in the Bible, it says they call them the Anak, the A-N-A-K. And they're calling these people megalithic giants. They say that these people are so big that we were grasshoppers in their eyesight. That's in the Bible. In ancient Egypt, Egypt they call them the Nituru. They say that the gods who came from heaven to earth, same exact terminology, and turned mud into a kingdom. Now, when you look deeper into where these people came from, you start to go through a lot of various different texts. And you begin to realize it's not just one group of people that came from one planet. It appears to be 
a group of people that came from multiple planets, even multiple solar systems. According to the ancient text, not according to Billy Carson. That's a pretty good point about the Anunnaki I didn't even think of. You know, if, if aliens, if we were to travel to a different planet and aliens asked us, you know, where we're from or what are we, we would probably announce ourselves as Earthlings along with our titles and everything. But we would be announced as Earthlings, people from Earth. And also, I was not quite aware that they were so massive that we as people seemed like grasshoppers to their eyesight. That means that they were massive individuals. So in comparison to us standing next to like the Pyramid of Giza, we are tiny compared to something like that. But how big are the Anunnaki compared to like the Pyramids of Giza? Are they equally just as big? or bigger, because we are kind of the size of a grasshopper to the Great Pyramids. This was a pretty interesting little story. Let me know what you guys think. not 100% sure, but to me that kind of looked like a group of drones potentially falling in the water or maybe some kind of paper lit bags or something. If any of you know what those were, leave a comment down below. I have a feeling that they were drones. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. Kai was watching one of those police chasing streams. Yeah. And I think it was in Atlanta, in his hometown. And all his fans during the police chase were saying, Oh, we found his Instagram. He's on live right now. He follows you. Kai goes to his Instagram and he sees, Oh shit, he is following me. He's alive! Nigga, what? He follows me! Tell Kai I'm in his bitch. And usually, like, when he does, like, these pranks, he's saying, like, oh, turn left, and the car would turn left, but that's fake. Yeah. Fam. Okay, make a left now, gang, if you watch it. For that. Looks like make a left, look. Down Clear. Make a left. Yeah, uh, with the CHP right behind them, but kind of like, okay, should I make a right or a left turn here? Looks like they're going left, but in this neighborhood... He goes on live with the guy that's getting chased. Oh, And he's shit. like, gang, pull over, pull over. Bro, get over, bro, pull over, bro. Now I put my face on this bitch at all, bro. bro pull no. The guy's like, fuck that guy. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I know my route. This is what he said. I know my route. He's ready to like to go. Damn. I ain't doing shit you tell me to do, bro. I know my route, gang. I just had to let you know I'm watching, bro. I'm off this bitch. But he's like, yo, Kai, he's like, yo, if, if I go, like, tell everyone, go follow my YouTube. And everyone's going like, what is going on? I know a few months ago, there was a lot of police chases happening live in like Miami, Florida and different major cities like that. It always grabs the attention of these massive influencers. And in my mind, it's totally fine for them to watch the chase and everything like that because the, the chase is live. It's meant for people to watch, meant for people to be aware of the situation. But it gets to a point where the people that are doing the, the chase, the people that are in the chase running from the police, they're doing it because of clout. Now they're doing it because they think that those YouTubers and those people of high social status are going to give them a shout out and it's going to put them in the spotlight of fame and that's not necessarily the influencer's fault but when they're watching these live streams live or recording the reactions to it and it's gaining millions and millions of views hundreds of thousands of people watching it it makes these people want to act out so that they can have their favorite YouTubers and stuff watch them for that shout out, basically. I don't know. It's just really crazy to me. Maybe I'm just getting older and this stuff's just going above the head. I know people complained back in the day that people were spamming in the comments for shout outs, but that's a lot safer than doing things like this. Okay, so everybody knows Elon Musk when he's ever asked about aliens, he says he's never seen them. I've never seen aliens, and I know that if there were any aliens, I would know about it. Well, just recently, they asked Ross Coltheart what he thought about Elon Musk in his statements, and this is what went down. He was speaking earlier this week, the Milken Institute, big, big event, and I want to get your thoughts on the other side. I've not seen any evidence of aliens. 
And SpaceX with the Starlink constellation has uh, roughly 6,000 satellites. And, and not once have we had to maneuver around a UFO. What would you say? Okay, there was a delicious scandal in England in the 1950s when a young woman was accused of having an affair with a British politician, and he categorically denied it. And Mandy Rice Davis said, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? And let's be honest about it, if, if Elon Musk had been briefed into a UFO crash retrieval program, and if he had been told by the Defence Department that his SpaceX contract was dependent on keeping it secret... I'm sure he would keep it secret. So, hey, guys, tell me in the comments, is Elon just part of the cover-up? Is he's like, hey, I don't want them bothering me and messing with me and, you know, my SpaceX deal? Or is he really, truly telling the truth that he hasn't seen any evidence? Yeah, I kind of lean towards what Ross Coltheart says. That's an interesting point. I didn't actually think of that. Who's to say if maybe you're not a billionaire, millionaire, or someone that's just trying to do some really off the wall things like going to space. Say that the government knows that there is extraterrestrial life out there, and that these type of people with power that has the technology to go to space, they're going to run across those extraterrestrials, or at least at some point interfere with them. So it would not surprise me if the government didn't pull someone to the side and say, hey, you have to keep this under full disclosure, there's no aliens that you know of, even though there is, you cannot say that there is, because if you do, we're gonna probably ruin your life. They probably hold a lot of weight over these people's heads. But yeah, that was a point that I would have never have thought of, actually, and I, it makes sense. The following security footage is from a security guard who was on duty late one evening. He said that he noticed something kind of walk up or float up towards the guardhouse. So he gets up and goes outside to check. The thing disappears. It spooks him. He runs back in and reviews the recording, and this is what he finds. It's interesting to note when the entity, the ghost, seems to disappear, it's like two orbs shoot up into the, the air. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. To me, that definitely looked like someone just walked up into the vicinity. I have a feeling it was just a normal person, nothing extraterrestrial, nothing paranormal. It's too blurry to tell 100%, but it looks like a real person to me. Let me know in the comments what you think. Never use a shovel that looks like this. Yeah, guys, you would never want to use this shovel. So for context, I came across this post on my For You page, and as you can tell, it says, I'll pay someone $100 to come use this shovel barehanded for five minutes. At first, you might think that sounds like some easy money until he zooms in on the shovel handle. And the video did a better job of showing this, but you see all those glistening things? All those shiny little specks on this shovel handle are little pieces of fiberglass. This shovel is made out of fiberglass, and over time, these things start to wear out and flake. And this shovel has hundreds and hundreds of little pieces of fiberglass all over it. And as soon as you pick this thing up and start using it, you're going to have these shards all throughout your skin. And as you could imagine, these things are pretty painful. They will definitely irritate your skin and be very itchy. If you ever do get fiberglass shards in your skin, the best thing to do is use duct tape. Using duct tape on your skin will pull most of the shards out. But yeah, guys, never use a shovel that looks like this. Well, anyone that tricks someone into using that with no gloves on is just a jerk. I've handled utilities like that myself that had fiberglass handles and myself not knowing any better at the time. I'll tell you what, that will mess your hands up. It'll mess your arms up because you'll start scratching and spreading it everywhere. It's not good and it's not good for you either. It's, can it's very cancerous. I've had my fair share of fiberglass splinters from ladders as well. I can't be the only one out there. Come on. Wow, look at this one. Holy moly. Oh. My spirit. Holy crap. 
Wow, I have to say that was probably one of the best orb videos I've ever seen in my life. I do not think that it was a fly or a gnat that was just out of focus. I do think that that was either dust or a genuine orb because it did seem very solid. Yeah, probably one of the best orb videos I've seen. There are currently videos all over Twitter right now with what appears to be what they're claiming to be a meteor. They're even saying that they believe they know where it landed. But for something to be that big and that bright to land without making a sound, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying that is really, really bright. I've never seen a meteor that bright before. And wasn't that the same color as the Devil's Comet that was present during the eclipse? This is around supposedly where it fell. Look at this, though. Look at the lens flare. There's something round. Come, I'm not trying to wear a tinfoil hat right now. I'm just saying there's something round and pointing like a craft of some sort. I don't know. What do y'all think? It must just be the skeptic in me, but to me, this seems like something more. What do y'all think it is? Do y'all believe in meteors? Let me know in the comments. I have to say, out of a lot of meteor footage that I've seen, this is probably one of the best meteorite videos I've seen in a long time. The, the clarity of some of these shots are almost super cinematic. And I get it, we're, we're in a time where we have really good smartphones and cameras on us at all times, so it's no surprise. But that was by far one of the best looking meteors I've ever seen going across someone's video feed. I've always found it suspicious as shit that we don't talk about the similarities between the Bible and the ancient Anunnaki. So let's do that for a second. This is an ancient Sumerian cylinder scroll. And what it depicts is their god, Inki, who was sent down by his father, the god of heaven, Anu, to rule over the people that they had created. Now they created these people to mine gold to save their planet. And if you've never heard that story, just let me know and I'll make another video. But anyways, doesn't that sound like capital G-O-D sending down his son to take care of the people and lead the people. Okay, moving on. You know how the Pope wears that hat and like that long fish looking majigger robe thing majig? What's that? What's that? And they're worshiping the heavens. They're worshiping something up in the sky. It looks like a spaceship to me, but again, that's another video. Didn't capital G-O-D come down from the heavens? Don't we look up? Now, the last similarity I do not have a picture of, but you can go and look it up. It's called the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it was written centuries before the story of Noah, but what it depicts is a global flood and a man building a ship and saving his family and one of every animal. Sounds a whole lot like what's in the Bible, doesn't it? There's so many more similarities that I could list out. It would take me a whole nother video, and if you want those, let me know. But this is why. Scary ocean facts you'll wish you never knew. The largest tsunami ever was 1,800 feet in Lutana Bay which was caused by a giant landslide. 1,800 feet, can you even comprehend that? To put it into context, that is taller than the Eiffel Tower, taller than the Empire State Building, and not far off the Burj Khalifa. A lot of you probably know, but only actually 5% of the ocean has been discovered. And think about all the crazy things that we have found in that 5%. So imagine what else is out there in the 95. I literally thought my whole life the anglerfish was like the size of a ball or something. Oh my god. Seven foot long. This is Point Nemo, the most remote place on the entire planet. In fact, when you're here, the nearest people to you are the astronauts in space. The Pacific Ocean is absolutely huge. It covers literally 30% of our entire globe. Dolphins may seem sympathetic and that, you know, they're actually a lovely creature that wants to help you, but they're actually pretty evil, according to some people. It's estimated that we actually know more about our own galaxy than the water that is on our own planet. 95% that we have absolutely no idea about. Nah. Make sure you share this video with someone who's scared of the sea. And as always, I will see you in the next one. I had no clue that those anglerfish could get that big. That would be terrifying to see in person. An actual living anglerfish that's seven foot massive, looking like something straight from a nightmare. The ocean is an amazingly scary place and I love it. I love, I love ocean exploration. It's always been something that's highly fascinated me and it always has irked my nerves that we have not explored it more. 
His mother was upstairs putting the baby to sleep, and at the same time, she was keeping an eye on her son and speaking to him through the baby monitor. Be careful. It's me, Snoopy. The mother never heard that woman's cries. The woman crying out as if fighting for her life. She makes the point that the cries were echoing from the walls inside the house. The little boy was reacting, also as if knowing someone else was in the room with him. Watch how he looks sideways. Creepy stuff. Teleportation is becoming an actual reality right now today. We're able to do it with uh, individual particles and also now molecules. I think the furthest distance now has been six or seven miles. Um, and But now uh, with the advent of DNA storage devices and the capability of uh, storing information on DNA, we're talking about being able to store every single position and location and spin rate of the atom in your body and then teleporting you to another location where the computer on that side will recreate and put back together every atom of your, of your body in the exact same position, making you a copy of you. One thing with teleportation you have to understand is you're creating a facsimile every time you teleport. So it's actually you, but... In a kind of a way, it's a copy of you, because when you teleport, the original you uh, is actually destroyed, and the the, sec the one that pops up on the other side is the copy. The following footage comes from a witness out of Siberia. He decides to take a walk in the woods behind his home, but this isn't like any typical walk that he's gone on. While he's out there walking deep in the woods, he finds something he's never seen before, a gigantic wall. What's en which ends up being a huge fence in the middle of the woods. So many questions arise. Specifically, what is it? Who made it? And what's behind there? It almost makes you wonder about the rumors and the conspiracy theories coming out of Siberia of all the secret testing. Is this proof? Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Привет, парни. Я тут в шоке. Решил прогуляться. По территории, посмотрите, какой забор. Вот это забор. Я просто в ахуе. Сейчас покажу еще. Вот это забор. Вон он кончается. И вон там кончается. Вон угол. Вот такой вот забор. Ха. Wow, I wish the video quality was just a little clearer because it does not quite look like a fence. It looks like a tall building kind of reflective in a way or smooth surface, but nonetheless, it looks extremely tall, taller than the trees. If this is a real video, I wonder what that could be. I also wonder how deep does the fence go down into the ground? Could someone just easily dig themselves under the fence? To anybody that's watching this, do you know what that is? Because I would really like to know if that's something actually secretive or if that's just holding some kind of like a power facility or something but let me know in the comments if you have any idea what this is one time we were at a library together all studying and then it was me you and Calista were studying one of the one of the bookshelves right yeah it's maybe like 20 meters away she's like something's there and she didn't even want to look at it she's like she's like, I don't know. She's like something's there something's there 
And this is just in public. This is in public in a library. And coincidentally, in that one corner, light was flickering. Oh, oh that's no, but the crazy. Thing is, oh my God. That's the beat. When everyone's like, oh, when everyone's like, oh my God, I got a chill light flickering. It's like, no, it's nothing. It is something, bro. It literally is something. I like, have personal I stories cannot. that I... Did you experience something like that? This always happens. When I come home and it's like 3 a.m., right? There's this light. It never flickers until like super late at night. And it's only whenever... I don't know, whenever I'm like there for too long, I'm chilling there and I'm just like getting water, or whatever. I, I'm, I'm just on my phone and I would always see like a, t- 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 oh, yeah, you're loitering. And then I'm like looking at it. Ah, it's nothing, whatever. I walk away. Is, like, everyone's like, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. But then if you think about it realistically, this stuff doesn't happen on a normal basis. Yeah, because yeah. I always felt something though. Exactly. That's, that's why, like, that's why it tripped me out. Like, if you pay attention, does weird. that light flicker any other time? Like, I mean, it can be a little silly to be creeped out by such a little thing like a flickering light. I personally also have this kind of experience. It doesn't necessarily freak me out or anything, but one light in my house, and it's only in the middle of the night, like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, when I go to the bathroom, my bathroom light, because I have two bathrooms, and I personally go to my guest bathroom, that's my favorite bathroom in the house, my wife takes over the master bathroom. But my bathroom, only at 2 or 3 o'clock in the, in the morning, if I turn that light on and I'm just sitting there in the toilet doing my business, maybe scrolling through my phone or something, that light will start flickering. But when I go to look at it, it stops. And then when I stop paying attention to it, it just starts flickering again. It's really crazy. And it does make me feel sometimes, hmm, I wonder if someone or something is trying to communicate with me. Does anything like that ever happen to you? I I know it's got to be just an odd coincidence or probably faulty wiring or maybe even my bulbs going bad. But people have to be experiencing this kind of stuff also and it just seems really odd. Oh my God. Is that your phone? Yeah, that's my um, detox thing. How do you you detox? (laughs) You detox on a timer? What do you do? supposed to take this... What is that? Pure body extract. And um, there's Advanced another one. Advanced daily cellular detox. What's in this? And this too. <laughs> What's in this stuff? Just things to counteract the natural met- the metals that we have in our bodies that that wear us out. <laughs> and you just take these periodically yeah, throughout the day on a yeah, timer? Yeah, I got I to do it now. I got to do it Okay. Now. I take a dropper, part of that dropper, and then four sprays and... It, it removes the parasites from your system, like oil of oregano, like using oil of oregano instead of using um, um, antibiotics. And have you felt an effect? Yes. Yeah? What do you feel when you take this? Well, I used to have really thick, dark circles under my eyes. That's gone away in the last six months I've been using that. My skin, I'm 55 years old. I'm 55 years old, and I smoke. Do I look like I'm 55 no, years old? No, you don't. Old? You look great. And do you think that's because of this? I think, well, I'm going to show you a picture of what I used to look like. This is what I looked like when my wife met me. I was 256 pounds. Were you eating differently? Well, now I'm intermittent fasting. I follow her routine. But she turned me from that into this. It's like she shined up. Yeah, you look about... 15 years younger. I still smoke my cigarettes. <laughs> Why do you do that? I'm a crackhead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody has to have some vice. Like Alan Watts said, you got to have some, some balance of beneficence and, and rascality to you. I'm not going to lie. Terrence Howard looks extremely good for his age. If he's 55, he looks very good for his age. I'm going to have to follow some of his skincare routine because I'm starting to look a little rough. <laughs> Do you ever hear the, the lead paint theory? Lead paint? No. Nah. So that? you know how lead paint is like banned everywhere, right? Okay. Yeah. Check this out. So it only recently got banned, like I think in the in the 80s maybe. Uh huh. But the reasoning was because people were eating the paint and it's poisonous because yeah. too much lead. Well, there's another theory. The theory goes, uh-huh. did you know lead paint blocks out EMF and radio signals? What? Yeah. So lead paint is one of the only ways to stop EMF radiation from getting to you. Oh, 
so if you have it in like your house or anything the radiation wouldn't get to you whoa <clears throat> the theory goes that what if there's something a radio frequency that manipulates every single human somehow whether it be through their mind their body mm -hmm. to change our frequency and then if you exit that like through like lead paint or wherever you are you see a whole different world wait but you said it's they're selling it now though no they, they don't have it anymore lead oh, paint, they don't lead paint's it. banned everywhere oh, shit. isn't that why um uh people started dying in up yeah that, that i i said i said a theory that before it, i think it, it had something to do with lead paint I mean, that's a really good point. I would have never have thought about that until I had people actually tell me, you know, hey, x-rays and stuff can't pass through lead. Even though I already knew that, I did not take into consideration that a house painted in lead paint would not be able to be affected by, like, ray damage. And then they say that kids ate the paint chips and it was getting them sick, which I'm not going to lie. I knew a lot of kids when I was growing up that were eating paint chips. For some reason, it was an extremely fun thing to do. You're just looking out the window. They look down. Paint chips are there. Yum, yum, yum. That's just what happened. And it did make them pretty sick. So I'm not going to disagree that the lead paint was not making kids sick, but it could also have been a good cover up to get rid of lead paint to cause more harm to people's houses. It's a really interesting theory that I can make a lot of sense out of. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here today. I'm really sorry I didn't have a video out yesterday. For some reason, TikTok is giving me some extreme problems. Every time that I save a video, it gets deleted or it's not in my saved. And then the next day they are in my saved. A lot of weird things are happening right now with my TikTok account. I don't know if that's happening across all the people's TikToks, but it's given me a fit for some reason. But other than that, everything has been going well on my end. I'm feeling so much better than I was last week. I'm still not 100%. I still have like this rattle in my chest that's really hard to get out. But I can definitely breathe and it doesn't sound like an accordion every time I try to breathe in and out. So thank you for all the support that you guys provided me last week on getting better. I really appreciate that. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting in today's video, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.